So a lot of guys think this is just the hormone of sexy times and feeling great and getting muscles. Mm. But there's more to that than this. I want to talk about the, there's some key risks to having low testosterone. So when I had really low testosterone, I would get the night sweats. You know, I'd be waking up all the time. Out of, out of, I wasn't sleeping deeply. And you need to have that deep sleep to restore your growth hormone, the testosterone, getting the signal, because in the morning, your testosterone's the highest. So if you constantly have really bad sleep, really fractured sleep, not enough sleep, not good quality sleep, that can affect your testosterone level. <laughs> So there are supplements. Uh, so when people have prolactinomas, yeah. they're given these dopamine agonists. Mm -hmm. uh, essentially, uh, unlike having given dopamine yourself, so someone who has Parkinson's disease, the, the end stage is L-dopa, which yeah. is the yeah. purest thing to normal dopamine, mm -hmm. uh, but it doesn't last long and they get their symptoms back. So prior to that, they load them up with other dopamine agonists. People who have prolactinomas, these little tumors, there's a few of the drugs available. Quinagolide is one in the in UK, Europe, Canada, um, and uh, cabergoline is the other. Um, cabergoline lasts a long time. Quinaglide, you have to use it every day. Uh, those are the two main ones that are used for shrinking the tumor. And, and, and so that you don't have to have surgery because the other alternative is you have to have surgery. But anyway, when you, you give these, um, they find that it shrinks, it, it shrinks. Those guys who lower the prolactin also get a rise in testosterone. But what I've seen from patients that have come to us who've had the, the, the cabergoline treat or the caber treatment is it's usually not enough of an increase. So it's enough to make the endocrinologist happy. It got you from 200 or it got you from you know, 12 up to maybe 17 or 15, but the patient isn't always fully happy, but the endocrinologist is, and those who usually treat it. So yes, if the dopamine goes up, if the prolactin goes down, yes, your testosterone can go up. One supplement that will boost your testosterone on a blood test is biotin which is why we tell you don't take biotin. You guys are worried about losing their hair and they'll take all the supplements for the hair and the nails and they'll do the testosterone test. It will uh, give us a false reading, um, a skewed result, usually a higher result for testosterone if there's a good amount of biotin that you're taking. Um, there's two reasons why your, your testosterone doesn't work usually. It's either the signal to your brain is pumping out, it's too weak, or the, the, the testes aren't uh, as responsive to it. So despite a strong signal coming from the brain, the testes won't produce enough testosterone. Uh, but it's, uh, that's more common, it's called primary hypogonadism. And then if you get this, you know, the brain is weak, that's, we don't see that as often. And that could be boosted with enclomiphene. It's kind of like in thyroid uh, in treatment. In, when you have uh, hypo, low thyroid treatment, they don't even look at your actual T4, T3, the actual N thyroid molecules. They just look at the TSH. So the TSH is the analog to your LH on the testosterone side. So imagine if we, if we, if we only measured men and said, we're not, gonna, we're not gonna measure your testosterone level, we're not gonna look at your free testosterone level, we won't look at your SHBG, we're only going to look at your, your LH. And that's how we're gonna determine if you have low testosterone or not. That's what they do in thyroid treatments, which is bizarre. And, the, and, and maybe they'll have a reflex test if the TSH is over a certain level. So basically the higher the TSH, the worse your thyroid is. With testosterone, the higher your LH, it could be that the worst of your testosterone is because your end organ, the testes, aren't very efficient in taking this massive signal. It's only giving you an average amount of testosterone spitting it out. So it, there is a, there are, it kind of is analogous to each other, but it's not the full picture. So that's, that's kind of where I'm going with it. You need to have a sensitive receptors in the testes and you need to have an average amount of LH. And when that doesn't work, you can bypass the system. And that's what we started talking about with clomiphene or certain things to trick the brain into making more testosterone, but that's not a long-term solution. So if you, uh, and I'll tell you why. There's nothing better than actual real testosterone, either made by your own body, which you can do by manipulating the brain. The problem is we talked about estradiol, estrogen. It, it, it's important to also have that in your brain. And so when you're constantly suppressing uh, that in the brain, whilst it's good for producing more gonadotropin, more LH, hence more testosterone, if your testes are capable of it, long-term it might not be ideal for mood, for sex drive, for libido, but it can get the, the levels up. So the thought is, if you had low testosterone um, and you had functioning testes and you didn't want to go on full exogenous TRT treatment, one could essentially go on a combination of like an n clomiphene or clomiphene treatment to boost the signal of the brain, shorter term, six months maybe, um, and then maybe Proviron to give them more of the androgen effect and keep the SHBG down 
and, and perhaps then your, your testes are going and they're getting exercise in a way that they wouldn't with just HCG, and then you, you can probably like, take off the stabilizers, the training wheels, and then kind of go off on your own and with lifestyle and things, see if it's better. Um, that's one way some guys do to recover. But many guys find that after time, they're right back to where they started and they need the TRT treatment. I want to talk about the, there's some key risks to having low testosterone. You know, everyone talks about, well, what are the risks and side effects of being on testosterone? We kind of talked about the one thing about, oh, if we'll get prostate cancer. Another consideration was, you know, certain heart disease and um, your blood can get thicker on testosterone treatment. Is you guys heard of that? Sometimes mislabeled and stupidly called polycythemia vera which has to do with an iron disorder where your, your blood has a lot of iron in it. And a lot of patients who have a testosterone deficiency, one of the reasons why they have, high, uh, have uh, low testosterone could also be due to what's called hemochromatosis. It's a genetic disorder. I think about 15% of men in Europe uh, may have this disorder. It's hereditary. So if you have hemochromatosis or a partial, uh, you can, that could be one of the reasons for your low testosterone. Um, but what we talk about normally with the hem hematocrine hemoglobin in the red blood cells has to do with erythrocytosis. It's secondary to testosterone treatment. So testosterone gets the kidneys to create more erythropoietin, which is um, like a hormone that causes an increase in, in red, red blood cells. It's a calculation. They're not actually looking under the microscope and saying how many blood cells are set. I mean, they, they use the red blood cells as a part of the calculation and they use something called mean cell volume and it's called MCV. And if you drink too much water, too close, you can actually inflate the size of the red blood cell. Likewise, if this, the blood sits around too long before it gets tested, it will also increase the size. And what that means is if the MCV number goes up because the cells got bigger, mm -hmm. plus they multiplied against the red blood cells, then it looks like you have this artificially higher hematocrit than normal. So we'll also look at the hemoglobin to tell. And that tells another picture. If your hemoglobin's high and you're on testosterone, you may get or have or have unmasked a sleep apnea issue. So, you know, testosterone doesn't cause sleep apnea. And this again, this is, could be a side, but sometimes it will unmask it. So it's not a free ride just because you get on testosterone treatment. There are certain things that can arise. So if you've got low testosterone, it could affect your sleep. So when I had really low testosterone, I would get the night sweats. You know, I'd be waking up all the time. Yes. Out of, out of, I wasn't sleeping deeply. And you need to have that deep sleep to restore your growth hormone, the testosterone, getting the signal, because in the morning, your testosterone's the highest. So if you constantly have really bad sleep, frac really fractured sleep, not enough sleep, not good quality sleep, that can affect your testosterone level. So as we get older, melatonin is a natural hormone. It's over the, sh over the counter in the US, in Europe, in the UK. It's controlled and we can barely get more than 2.5 milligrams. And when, if it does get prescribed, doctors aren't supposed to prescribe it for more than three or four days. Mm. All these hormones kind of work in connection, hence we're balanced by hormones, not balanced yeah. by testosterone, yeah. is that um, it's a diabetes drug. Bromocryptine and cabergoline for this matter, but there's actually a drug that's FDA approved in America start starting at eight, I think it's eight milligrams is a much lower dose and can go up to as high as 40 for diabetes. And what they found is if you get a lower prolactin level, and that might be due to the dopamine as well, you can reduce insulin resistance and, 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 and blood sugar. There are benefits to having a lower prolactin. And I think we're gonna see more and more of this because prolactin that gets too high, it can be a vasoconstriction. It's not good for your blood vessels. You can have higher risk of atherosclerosis. So prolactin is very, very important to keep a bit down and it's not fully recognized because we don't have a lot of good tools long term. A lot of guys think this is just the hormone of sexy times and feeling great and getting muscles, mm. but there's more to that than this. It's not just this, the sexy hormone, but it's also, you know, if you have lower levels, it affects your metabolism. And, and so the, we've had guys that go off the treatment, yeah, okay, I feel fine, I'm okay, I'm getting on with it in my brain. But you know, they come back and, and they've noticed, you know, in, in, increased yeah, body right. fat. Yeah. Um, you, you know, the, the, the insulin resistance has gone up. They've had some other issues tied, tied to, you know, metabolic disorders. And yeah, you can crack on, but it, it may not be optimal. So um, you know, you're at a greater risk of poor blood sugar control and diabetes, obesity, loss of muscle mass, which is called sarcopenia. Obviously, if your estradiol is too low because your testosterone is too low, you're at risk of osteoporosis. Um, depression and mood disorders. Uh, are affected because testosterone again helps raise the serotonin and the dopamine and a certain amount of norepinephrine. Uh, obviously sexual dysfunction is, isn't great and that's something where there's a Dr. Adams that was on my channel that would talk about guys who are on testosterone, fixes their AD, ED, then go off the testosterone and sometimes they find it harder. And athletes are known to have, like the Olympic athletes are known to have lower levels of testosterone. It's almost as if they diminish them 
through all the activity and it kind of overstrains the body. So what happens to us is we get a lot of men that self-select in the sense that, you know, they've tried, or at least I think they've tried all these other remedies and diet changes and lifestyle changes, many of them, and they'll come, then they'll come to us, they'll present, they'll get the blood test and, and they have said, I've already tried these things. Our doctors will still ask them if they have, but many times they've already come to that point where like they're, they're ready to, to trial this. But this is nothing that we ever want to push a man into because hormones are like a lock and key. The receptors are the lock, the hormones are key. It's switched on, it's doing you know, good things, genetic things. It doesn't just stop overnight and say, hey, you didn't do this today, it's gone. No, it, it'll, have a, it'll last a bit longer, even without continued application or continued injections. When you do an exogenous testosterone treatment, you are bypassing the signal from the brain. That allows a whole orchestra of things to happen. Your, your, you know, the brain switches on to LH um, and also to certain degree FSH, as they're called gonadotropins. There's something that goes higher than that. The, the thing at the way top, I think I said yesterday, was kispeptin. It kicks off puberty, kicks off the uh, GNRH, gonadotropin releasing hormone. Gonadotropin releasing hormone kicks off the gonadotropins, LH and FSH, and they signal your testes to make testosterone and sperm. There's specialized cells in the testes or Leydig cells, Sertoli cells. Um, the key is, and the irony is, when you go on exogenous testosterone, there's a feedback loop. As testosterone's made, I told you, it converts into estradiol and, and DHT. That estradiol is sensed by the brain, the hypothalamus, and, uh, and switches off the signal for the LH, and that whole cascade is broken, okay? But the irony is, even though you're on exogenous testosterone, the testes need testosterone originating within the testes to make more sperm right, to keep you fertile. And, and so you're gonna become more, less fertile even if you're on exogenous testosterone. But it doesn't happen straight away. Some men, they can be on exogenous testosterone, not be on HCG, not be on Clomid, and, and have fertility for a good while. Mimics, or as an analog to the luteinizing hormone from your brain, probably not as good, but in some ways good because it, it lasts a bit longer than the LH. It's, like normally these things are pulsed, they're pulsatile. They don't, it's not like a constant steady flow it's going to the testes. You'll get a pulse here, a pulse in the morning, a pulse maybe in the afternoon, and then this pulse is picked up and that's kind of how it works, which is why they say you don't want to kind of oversaturate the receptors if you blast the HCG. They, they like this little, short little blast, not these big ones. I mean, there, there's been some, so what's frustrating is in some of the studies and the trials, and, and they, they'll, they'll use, a, they'll basically define the range that they want to get. They'll say no higher than 25 or 20 nanomoles per liter, and they, and they want you higher than uh, maybe between 12 and 25 and like to keep you in this range. And they'll use things like the tester gel to keep you within that range. And then they'll say, oh, well, um, it didn't have any of these negative effects. Well, actually, one of the trials that they did, they actually, and they used the tester gel, they said, oh, we're finding that in the men that had the testosterone, they had a greater risk of osteoporosis. And I, I made this, you can find this in my YouTube video. And what we think happened was, firstly, these guys were low testosterone for a long time anyway. They were given underdosed testosterone by keeping them in these narrow parameters. They weren't on the treatment long enough and they probably were having suboptimal levels and weren't, weren't getting enough conversion estradiol as it was. So of course they're probably gonna have a higher percentage of osteoporosis, but testosterone full stop across the board, if it's done properly, is not gonna cause that. All right, is there anything else? You guys enjoy that? All right. All right cool. Thank you guys, thank you. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to watch our other videos on topics around HRT and TRT, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And until next time, stay in good health. This is Mike from Balance My Hormones.